let's say you're fucking. Let's say you're fucking... I don't know, you're fucking dog style, right? Let's say you're fucking dog style and the chick gets pregnant. I mean, uh, would the kid pop out backwards? I don't know, I saw some chick walking around the street with a big hump on her back. Said, you a fucking dog style, eh? Oh, Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet. <laughs> Eating a curds and whey. Long came a spidey, sat down beside He said, hey, what's in the bowl, bitch? Oh! <laughs> Jack and Jill went up the hill, both with a buck and a quarter. Jill came down with 250. That uh, fucking whore. <laughs> Little boy blue, he needed the money. <laughs> Was an old lady, lived in a shoe, she had so many kids, a uterus fell out. <laughs> Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack burnt off his fucking dick. Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her old dog a bone. She bent over, Rover took over. Oh! She got a bone of her own. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, trim that pussy, it's so damn hairy. Oh! All right, I see you've been doing your homework. <laughs> but you see, that's where I keep going. <laughs> I'm not happy just giving you the old shit. So I put together a few more. <laughs> Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife, loved to beat her, smacked her twice across the head, fucked the race, and went to bed. <laughs> Little Bo Peep fucked the sheep, blew a horse, licked his feet, she ate his ass so very nice, tongued his balls not once but twice. <laughs> Mary had a little lamb she kept in her backyard. When she took her panties off, his woolly dick got hard. Hickory dickory dock, some chick was sucking my cock. The clock struck two, I dropped my goo, I dumped the bitch on the next block. End of story. Yeah, good old Mother Goose, remember her? I fucked her. I didn't have no fucking choice. Two tits, a hoe, and a heartbeat. That's all it takes for me. Hey, when you see a chick, hey, she's got a great personality, yeah. But does she suck a good dick? My friend Joey's got a good personality, too. But I don't want him to blow me. That's why I don't understand this whole faggot thing, you know? To me, that's common sense. I don't see how a guy lays on the beach, looks at another guy's hairy ass and says, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I gotta have that. <laughs> I ain't leaving the beach till I see him, yeah. 
and they're too sensitive. They don't know if they want to be called gays, homosexuals, fairies. I call them cocksuckers. I think it spells it out. What's the big debate about already? Yeah, they want their rights. I'll give them rights. Ten percent off of Vaseline. Now get the fuck back in the closet. It's unbelievable. I, I can't deal with it no more, man. And you got all kinds. It's not just the, the regular, you know, two-arm, two-leg fags that get me. It's these trans testicles, you know? You ever see one of them? That's a nice Sunday surprise, huh? Meet the girl of your dreams, you whine or diner. You take her home, you put your hand up her skirt, you're holding a tree trunk. What do you say? Hey, for a chick, you got some set of balls. And bisexual, let me explain something. There is no bisexual. No such thing. You either suck dick or you do not suck dick. I mean, what do these guys do? Get up in the morning and flip a coin to decide. Heads I want, hair pie, tails, balls across the nose. Oh! What a choice, huh? I mean, you never see a black guy being gay. You don't see that. How do you give a guy head from three blocks away and say, I love you? Blacks are proud of their penises. They hold on to it like someone's going to rip it off. You've seen them coming down the street. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have said to me, Moby, why are you always holding your thing? Well, you know it wouldn't be gentlemanly to leave it dragging on the ground behind me and shit. Yeah, well, while you're at it, why don't you snake the toilet, okay? And plunge the kitchen sink. It could always use it, Mo. Oh, the blacks know what I'm talking about. Where are you tonight? Smile. <laughs> hey, no, throw it up here. Let me just show them. But I give him credit, he's got the balls. That's all it takes in this world, fucking balls. Like, look at these Japs. These Madam Butterfly wok-using little nip motherfuckers. I mean, I go into a bank, the name of my bank is Hanging Hoi Hoi. They're taking over. Didn't we drop two bombs on them a few years ago? What was in those bombs, fucking fertilizer? And they're the worst drivers. I mean, how do you drive with your eyes three quarters closed? You can blindfold these people with fucking dental floors. You don't give them keys to a car. You don't put your money in that fucking bank. You kick them in the ass and say, get the fuck out of the country. <sighs> but you, you don't let shit like this get to you. I try to stay cool, you know what I mean? I don't know, man. Maybe it's me. I just don't get it. I, 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 I'm having a hard time with people lately. <sighs> I'm even seeing one of these psychopathologists. I went into him. I said, you know, Doc, I'm, I'm having a hard time making friends, you cocksucker. <sighs> Can you give me some advice? So he sends me for a physical, right? And let me tell you something. Doctors know nothing about the body. It's unbelievable. Number one, I come walking in, the nurse comes over like an animal. Give me a cup of urine. Go, you take cream and sugar with that, honey? Maybe a donut on the side. So now she sends me into the doctor. He's checking me out. I think everything's all right. Just as I'm getting dressed, the guy jams a finger up my ass. This man went to school for 35 years to learn about the body. You, you don't jam your finger up someone's ass. I mean, tickle it. Talk dirty to me. Get me excited about the project. Then he starts juggling my kuyans like he's looking for ripe tomatoes. So I'm going, Doc, back off. This ain't no fucking social call. So you know what this fucking nitwit tells me?
He goes, you need to cut down in smoking. So I'm like, okay, but did you have to stick your hand up my ass to find this out? I mean, number one, I'm smoking 15 years. My lung feels great. Smoking don't bother me, man. I'm telling you, I jog five miles a day and smoke. I, I smoke when I'm banging a chick. Sometimes they get a little pissed off. The ashtray slips off their ass now and then, you know. So you give them a little sin. That's it, honey. Move that fucking thing. You want me to call again? But wherever you go, you know, people break out. I'm out with this pig a few weeks ago, right? And she's like, she's going, you know, you really shouldn't smoke. I mean, it's a dirty habit. I go, yeah, so's wiping my ass, but nobody's banning that. <laughs> you go into a movie theater, the minute you sit down, a big sign comes on, no smoking. That's when I light up. And there's always that one couple a few seats away. You know the ones. Oh, look at him. He's smoking. Yeah, yeah. And I'm jerking off too, honey. <laughs> Want to come a little closer? I'll buddy your fucking popcorn. <laughs> All over the country. Stop cigarettes. Stop fucking cigarettes, right? Up in San Francisco, the fag capital of California... They pass a bill. You can't even smoke in the street. They put you in jail because they say it offends people. Yeah, okay, it's offending. But it's okay if you want to butt slam your buddy while you're waiting for the bus. Yeah, smack him in the face with your dick five, six times. Oh, this isn't offensive, right? Yeah, you can smoke the baloney pony, but not a fucking Marlboro. What's wrong with people? Nobody tells me what to do, not even me. <laughs> You're supposed to be nice to people. Fuck you. <laughs> it's nice to be back in Philly. <laughs> I like the attitude. You get into a car in Philly, man. You better have an attitude. Because the minute you pull up to a red light, it's got to start, you know? guy next to you looks over. You got a fucking problem. <laughs> hey, what's your fucking problem, huh? I get out of this car, stick a pipe up your ass. Those are the chicks. Because out in L.A., man, they're wimpy, I'm telling you. Out there, you cross a crowded street, cars will stop. <laughs> yeah, try that here, you know <laughs> Guy tries to cross the street here It's like, hey, Joey's gonna try to make it He ain't even halfway across the street I wanna see him fucking legless <laughs> Ask somebody for the time in the street I love that Everything's a fucking attitude You go, excuse me, you know what time it is? Huh? What, you can't afford a fucking watch? <laughs> what do I look like, big fucking Ben to you or something? <laughs> oh, fuck yourself. Your mother's a whore, did I ever tell you that? <laughs> you prick, fuck you. I guess you don't know the time, huh? Oh, man, and then you go into Manhattan, you got them all there, man. I have no pity. No fucking pity. Like when these panhandlers come over, you know? Hey, man. You got some spare change? I only carry hundreds. You fucking smelly, sleazy, scummy bum. I'm the guy that put my boot in your eye when you were sleeping on the street an hour ago. 
What am I giving you money for? Fuck you, I got a family. You got your Moonies, your Harry Krishnas. Would you like to buy a pencil? Yeah, and I'm gonna sharpen it in your asshole. I need a pencil for it, I'm waiting for a fucking bus. Give me a dollar. Bingo, next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. Kin folks said, Jed, move away from here. California, now that's where you want to be. So they loaded up that hunk of shit they call a truck and moved to Beverly. Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars, dykes. Faggots, pimps, hookers, mass murderers, drug addicts, earthquakes. Great place to bring up a family, huh? Yeah, man, but the old TV shows like that, I really love. Like I Dream of Jeannie. No, she wasn't a whore. But this Major Nelson she lived with, he was a putz, this guy, you know? I mean, he finds this fucking chick. She walks around the house, her tits are hanging out. And if you get real close to the TV like I do, you could see Bush. Oh, she had a hair pie that would knock your Aunt Connie socks off. She had, you know, she's not like one of these women today that wax it, you know? Design a pussy, that's in today, you know? I don't want no wax, I want a clump of hair, you know? I want something I, I could plant tomatoes during the summer and water the shit. You know, but he's on TV and he's like, no, no don't, don't do nothing, Jeannie, don't do nothing. Give it to me for a day. Just one, give it to me for an hour, you know? I'd be like, okay, Jeannie, you want to do something? All right, I want you to make your tongue about six feet long and lick the back of my balls from across the room. You think you can swing it, honey? Or else get in the bottle, I'm throwing you back in the water. It's all you work. It's unbelievable, man. People, they, they, it, it's unbelievable. And then the cops today, cops are unbelievable, man. I'm driving down here tonight, right? This guy pulls me over, me. <laughs> he comes over to the car and he's like, I clocked you at 70. I go, yeah, I know, snap ahead, I would have hit 90, but you stopped me. <laughs> he goes, are you drunk? I go, yeah, a little horny too, wanna suck my dick? So now he's telling me, get out of the car and walk the white line. I go, look, number one, the line's yellow. I don't work without a net. That's just the way I am. <sighs> Cops, man. You need a cop today. You don't dial 911. You call Dunkin' Donuts. That's where they are. Because let's face it, that's where crime's really happening today. People are walking in with machine guns every day. Okay, order glaze in a fucking box. The munchkins too, let's move. So by the time one of these fucking cops even catch up to you, right? He's got powder on his face. He's got fudge on his fucking fingernails. The handcuffs are slipping out of his hand. I'm like, hey, let me put him on, all right? Don't clean yourself up, you fat fuck. Are you a cop or a circus act? Ah, oh, fuck. Ah, uh, you know, you know, I was, I was just going to do something. I, uh, I don't, no, 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 no. Let me, let me explain. I'll explain. Shut your mouth, honey. I got a game we could play. It's called Pinocchio. You sit on my face. I tell lies. It's a lot of fun. No, you see, I, I was going to put the mic back in the stand, but because of this group, because of the way I feel for you, I'm gonna work with the mic off the stand. I knew you'd appreciate it. This way, this way I could get to meet a few of you, you know what I'm saying? It's always nice to meet couples in love, you know what I'm saying? You are in love with her, aren't you, pal? Huh? You see, isn't she sweet? I'm sure a pop would be pleased to hear that. What's your name, little lady? Any idea? 
What's your name? Go ahead, you cute thing. What is it? Carol. How long are you going with Carol? I asked you a question. Carol. First time you nailed her? Just a quick question. Was she any good? Was she any good? She was good, right? Yeah, she was good. She was good. Well, let me ask you another question about your sweet little angel. How do you think she got to be that way? You want to answer that from Carol, huh? What do you think? I don't see the stretch marks around your mouth. Bottom line, you suck a good dick, yes or no? Can she suck the chrome off a trailer hitch and lay back with a beer? To me, that's a lady. Of course, today they don't suck dick the way they used to. They dabble in it. They lay there, they flick it, they smack it. Oh, look at the way it jumps. Cause sing and dance too, now suck my cock, honey. And then if they do you the favor, do they even complete the job? No. No, they're like, well, I don't want that stuff to come out. Well, what are you expecting, a tuna on rye, honey? That's why when I start, I put a little crazy glue around the rim. Oh, consider the job done. It's got its drawbacks. You walk into work Monday, you got some chicks swinging from your dick. But it's a beautiful thing, right? Your friends come over at work. Hey, Dice, you have a good weekend? Say hello, Carol. Mm, shut up. Finish up already, putty lips. And how you guys doing, okay? Got a good relationship going? You're doing fucking great. I see what I'm dealing with with you, pal. What do you think? I don't see you sitting there with your wind tunnel tested head, do? <laughs> you got the attitude, it's okay. You kidding me? I have always had an attitude. The second I was born, the doctor smacked me in the ass, right? I look at him, I go, Doc, <laughs> you got a fucking problem. And then you know what they do the second you're born? They throw you in the nursery with like 30, 40 kids you've never seen before in your life, right? Some laying there bored out of my mind. I ask this one kid, I go, hey, Dutch, you got a life for me, right? Kids laying there taking a dump in his diapers, drooling all over himself. Some saying this kid got no freaking class, right? I put on my leather ring for a little service. This big blonde nurse comes running in and shoves a plastic nipple in my mouth. I look at her and I said, sweetheart, <laughs> who you teasing, right? Pick up the dress. We're going to mow the lawn tonight, honey. Don't ever tease me like that. Yeah, even in school, you know, like 12 noon when the teacher would come over, you're in kindergarten, try to dominate your life. Drink your milk. I'd rip open a blouse, I'd say, honey, I like it from the tap. <laughs> yeah, teachers, man. Yeah, they expect the Jew to know the answers for them. <laughs> I used to love that shit. It's like one time I'm sitting in the back of the room doing the old knuckle shuffle on my piss pump, right? I ain't bothering nobody. Steve Teacher starts breaking my balls. She's like, Dice, what's the difference between two eights and three eights? So that's what I say, teach. What's the fucking difference? <laughs> what do I get a new car if I guess the answer? I just went out, I bought a new 88 caddy with all the options. Yeah. My first option was not to make any fucking payments on it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? To you. People have no fucking brains. Like in shampoos, you go into a store, they got every fucking shampoo for your head. Not one thing for the genitals. When is head and shoulders gonna wake up? I mean, think of the commercials. They'd make a fucking mint. 
First part of the commercial, you see this chick talking to a friend. You know, I went out with him last week, but his balls are flaky. <laughs> then you see the guy in the shower, he's scrubbing him, shining him up there like glow in the fucking dark, right? Now she's all smiles, she's licking his ass, his balls. She's like, gee, your balls smell terrific. <laughs> to me, that would work. But women probably run head and shoulders, that's what it is. And women really don't know much about the penis. You know, honey, I knew it was hot and sunny before I even got out of bed today. <laughs> Ask me why. Say it. Say why. Repeat after me. Why? Because my balls were hanging low. <laughs> Let's say that real tight. We're talking rainstorm. Half mass, cloudy with a chance of showers. That's right, honey, the penis thinks for itself. It's got its own brain. Why do you think the head's bigger than the rest? I could prove it's got a mind of its own. You ever get up in the morning and he's already awake? He's dressed, he's ready to go, right? He's in the kitchen making fucking flapjacks. You're in bed going, come on, Joey, five more minutes. And your penis is going, take me shopping. I need a new hat. But you remember when they first came out with the hard on, huh? Third, fourth grade, you're leaning over like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Teacher calls you up to the board and you're like, <laughs> I don't think so, honey. You're the teacher, you figure it out, all right? I got some kind of ligament over here, I don't know what's going on. This thing is like alien, it's drilling into the desk next to me. Call a cop. Maybe we'll throw a donut around. But you grow up, you learn to accept the hard on, to deal with it. Accept the pee hard on, you know? That's God's joke. You get up, you're late for work, you gotta take a squirt, and Joey's admiring the chandelier. You gotta stand there like a moron and talk him down. Come on, Joey, I dig you. We'll dot I's and cross T's later. Work with me. Yeah, the morning hard on. I'll put that up against that Ginsu knife any day. It'll slice, it'll dice, it'll pump your car up if you got a flat tire. See what I'm saying, Cal? Uh. So you think you're gonna marry her? Think so? I don't. Not if you really care for her. Not if you enjoy banging her. You don't marry him. You don't move in with him. Don't even act like you like him. Don't you know that? Everything changes once you marry him. Because when you're dating him. Here, you're dating her or marry Man, who's dating? Huh? You're dating her, right? He'll tell you. When you're dating... Thou bang the shit out of you. Right? Because that's the bait, isn't it, honey? But once they got you, they forget about sex, man. Unless it's with a friend of yours. Oh, yeah, I know what it's like. I've been there. You get married. All of a sudden, one day, you're sitting in the house. She's doing a little vacuuming. Little black panties creeping up her ass. So you go over, you gently stick your head up her ass. And all of a sudden, she's hoity-toity. She's like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? I figured I'd fuck you. <laughs> fuck! It's too hot. Oh, I gotta build you an igloo now, honey? Oh, and then once you get him in bed, you'll hear shit like, oh, why do you always have to make love to me from behind? Don't, don't you like to look at my face when you make love to me? I don't know, your face, your ass. What's the difference? I can stick my dick in either one, just get it done. They don't appreciate nothing, don't you know that? All the times you banged her, did she ever once thank you, say they may be much appreciated? No, they think it's coming to them. And I don't know about you, but I try to give them a show. I pull their hair, wrap them in the head a few times, kick their Say all the little things they want to hear in bed. You know, little things. I don't know. Fuck, pig. How old, stank? 
I mean turn on words. Because if you really think that when you got her, her knees pinned behind her rear lobes like Bugs Bunny, that she wants to hear, I love you, you figure the rest out. But that's why masturbation is so beautiful, you know? Man, I'm spanking it since I'm five. I didn't even know why I was doing it. I just knew it had to get done. And then when I hit like 13 and a little goo came out, I thought I broke the fucking thing. And I screwed everything in the house when I was a kid. Socks, gloves. My mother's got a mink coat that doesn't need a hanger anymore. I remember my mother going, we're having liver tonight. Yeah, well, I had it last night, ma. Oh, it was good. The jello wasn't bad either. <laughs> and don't think they don't do it, pal. <laughs> They've caught up. They don't use fancy finger work like us, no. We're talking machinery. <laughs> yeah, Black and Decker. <laughs> they come home from the neighborhood drugstore, they got one of these bats with them, you know? She's like, oh, it's only a massager. Oh, really? I never saw a massager that could drill a hole through a steel wall, honey. <laughs> And they come in speed, slow, medium, and blow my brains out. And then men wonder when they come over with the three-inch killer why women are sitting there going, <laughs> you've got to be kidding. Take a look at this thing, honey. I could drive to tamper on this. Now put that away before you get hurt. I'll tell you the truth. I don't even go with the good-looking ones no more. Too much disease out there, you know what I'm saying? And when I look for a girl, I look for something a little more unique. I go into a bar in the aisle parts, and there she is, holding up the fucking building. Maybe three, 450 pounds. Type of chick that looks like she don't even got no legs, you know? Celluloid dripping off the ears. Three chins in the back of her head. And I'm standing there saying to myself, you know, nobody's ever even thought of fucking that. But nobody's even talked to it. I'm gonna make her mine, right? So I go over and I start charming her, you know? I'll say shit like, hey, how you doing, honey? Hey, guess what? I got fudge. Hershey's chocolate kisses. We're talking hugging, does babe? What do you say, right? So by now she's drooling. I know I got her, you know? So anyway, what do I do? I wheel her back to my apartment. I got to butter her hips just to get her through the fucking door, right? This chick used to come to me like every three weeks. I just dropped 30 pounds, yeah, from your belly to your ass, honey. I mean, anybody could bang a good looking chick. You ever fuck a big fat pig? It's like taking a ride at Wet n Wild, man. There's nothing like hogging, you guys know that. Oh man, number one, you get behind them, you gotta strap yourself in. Because they could throw you. And then you grab onto a set of tits that you don't know where the tits begin and the belly ends. I mean, it's like one big lop of shit, you know? And she starts swinging from side to side. The celluloid's flapping off the fucking walls. You're dodging for your life, you know? You just jam it in, but you don't even give a shit where it goes. You're like, honey, just jiggle for me, all right? Oh, you know that fat when you're doing 69 and can't hear the radio, I'll tell you. I got a snorkel hanging out of this chick's ass. And with the positions today, you gotta bend them, stretch them, fold them. You gotta be fucking Gumby to make love. Oh, and women, they got the contraception, man. They got everything in there. They got foam in there today. Yeah, foam. You, 
you could fuck them and take a shave at the same time. I'm like, honey, mind if I use a little? I'm gonna moose tonight, yeah. Everything they got in there, IOUs, coils, slinkies, old car batteries. I don't know whether to fuck or to change the oil. You see, that's why I stick to the one night stand. Anybody here ever have a one night stand besides like everybody in the room? Here's my impression of a one night stand. Ugh, get out. And it hurts when a woman does that to me. Because I'm a delicate person, you can feel that. There were just no morals today, it's unbelievable. It's like I pick up this chick a few weeks ago, right? Get her back to my place, in five minutes she's screaming. Fuck me silly! I put on a clown suit, I mean, what would you do, you know? She's laying there, slay me, put it in bozo, I felt retarded. I met a chick last night, she says, give me 12 inches and hurt me. I fucked her twice and hit her in the head with a brick. Oh, women get pissed off about the one night stand, I'm telling you. You'll hear them have conversations like, oh, why is it that a guy could go out and fuck a hundred chicks, but if a girl does it, she's a whore? Right. <laughs> There's a reason for it. Guys have no guilt. It's unbelievable. Oh, women try. They come out of the house, they got the fuck me pumps on. Nylon stockings, little short dresses, they plaster the makeup on, tease their hair up to the moon, and they come out of the house like, oh yeah, somebody's gonna treat me like the pig that I am. <laughs> but the minute it's all over, they, they, they get guilty about it, you know? It's like these chicks, you meet in a bar, nine o'clock at night, by midnight, you're doing shit to them you wouldn't do to a farm animal. Come the morning, they're like, you know, I only needed to be held. Yeah, well, you got the bonus plan. <laughs> and then they're like, call me, yeah, I'll call you. Whore, cunt, trash, bucket, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like I was used. Let me confirm it for you, honey. My wife's gonna be home in a half hour. Don't call here no more. But don't think I'm putting women down. I dig them. I'm just goofing, you know. Fuck it, doodle doodle. What? I care for their needs. I care for their needs too. You know that. You know how I am. It's like this chick is sucking my dick, right? And she's like, don't come in my mouth. I go, honey, I don't want to fuck up your hair. We're in a nice restaurant. 